Introduction to Book Two. There is an art known only to a few, by which the purified and faithful sort of man may be instructed and illuminated, so as to be raised at once from the darkness of ignorance, materialism, to the light of wisdom and knowledge. If the soul is perfectly purified and sanctified, it becomes free in its movements. It sees and recognizes the divine light and instructs itself while it seems to be instructed by another. In this state, the soul requires no other admonition except its own realization, which is the head and guide of the soul. It is then no more subject to terrestrial conditions of time, but lives in the eternal. And for the human soul to desire a thing is to possess it already. Man's power to realize increases in proportion as this ethereal and celestial power of light penetrates his mind and developing his inner sight, it may enable him to see and perceive that which he interiorly thinks, just as if it were objective and external, spirit being unity and independent of our ideas of space, and all men having therefore essentially the same spirit. The soul of men existing at places widely distant from each other may thus enter into communication and converse with each other exactly in the same manner as if they had met in their physical bodies. In this state, man may perform a great many things in an exceedingly short period of time, so that it may seem to us as if he had required no time at all to perform it. Such a man is able to comprehend and understand everything by the light of the universal power, spirit, our guiding intelligence, with which he is spontaneously united. Again, that there is a certain kind of spiritual force, occult influence, or energy, based on the existence of the spiritual and astral world, placed without, not within the body, and into communication with which the human soul of man can enter by and through the law and principle of realization, has long been demonstrated as a fact. That is, these invisible forces evil spirits, who are earthbound and exist in the astral body. Now, you know, that snake's not the same thing. Can control a man and break him down as easily as the fearful hurricane sweeps all before it, striking him in a thousand places at the same time, without his being able to perceive the invisible foe, or being able to protect himself, is also proven. But these forces may be dominated, so that they will obey the thoughts, answer to the voice, and understand the meaning of traced signs. Is what many cannot realize, and what their reason rejects, yet... This also is capable of being demonstrated and proven. The reader and these students should always bear in mind that in trying to demonstrate these things for himself, he is working with unseen and powerful agents, which, if he is not equally powerful, pure, and high-minded, loving his fellow men, and seeking to benefit mankind rather than seeking or desiring occult powers to further his own selfish interests, he had much better be dead than to try any of these things for the gratification of his personal nature, for in seeking to harm another, curses like chickens return home to roost, 
with a much greater force than the original impulse. I'm not chasing that snake over there, but, um, you know, because curses can return with guilt and shame. They can return with anxiety about them not going as desired, at least in terms of the timing. They can return to be something not deserved. So, better to ask that people be bind from evil than anything else. Um, thus again, we should look within rather than without, as the exercise of true magic does not require any ceremonies or conjurations. Are the making of circles and signs. It only requires a strong faith gained through a knowledge of nature's laws which can accomplish anything if it acts through a human mind which is in harmony with these laws without which nothing useful can be done. True magic also consists in true faith, but true faith rests in spiritual knowledge, and without that kind of knowledge there can be no faith. This is only obtained by developing one's own inner and most lofty nature. The conjuration of the evil spirits of the astral plane, sorcery, and witchcraft means practically a pluralization of Faust, uh, a Faust and the demon. There are many strange things set forth in the following pages, almost too strange to believe, yet because one is ignorant of their existence, it does not follow that they are not real, as the sad records of sorcery and witchcraft, of voodooism and the black art, abundantly testify. Man does not know himself. Therefore, he does not understand the things of the invisible world. Each man has the essence of the divine, spiritual, within himself. He possesses one kind of knowledge as much as another, and he who does not find that which is in him cannot truly say he does not possess it. Only he is not as yet capable of successfully seeking it. Therefore, in seeking, always bear in mind true growth rests in the capacity of the human soul and the human will to comprehend spiritual truths and not by basing its conclusions upon external appearances caused by the illusion of the senses or of selfish purposes. The writer's teachings that are our soul is the vehicle of celestial attraction, transferring celestial and spiritual virtue into seals, images, amulets, rings, papers, glasses, etc. Also, he has endeavored to give the most clear and rational illustration to the wonderful occult, sympathy and antipathy, attraction and repulsion between all things in the universe. He has likewise proved how cures are performed by virtue of sympathetic powers and medicines by seals, rings, and limited distances, which he has been a witness of and are daily confined in the true and certain belief of. Now, I'm going to presume that says sympathetic because it's kind of blurred off a little bit here. Um... But it's important, especially when you're doing things like professionally, um, to check the scans prior. Um, I'm not sure this is Chluey U. I'm going to have to give this turtle a new name if it's not. Um, The writer knows how to communicate with any person and give him intimation of purpose at a hundred or a thousand miles distance. But then, a preparation is necessary, and the parties should have their appointed seasons and hours for that purpose. Likewise, both should be of the same firm constancy of mind, and a disciple or brother in occultism or adeptship. There is also given methods whereby a man may receive, may receive true and certain intimation of future things by dreams, of whatsoever his mind has before meditated upon, himself being properly disposed. Likewise, there is recited the various methods used by the ancients for the invocation of spirits from the astral plane, different forms of magic, exorcism, incantations, orations, binding of spirits, conjurations, all of which is the knowledge taught by the Eastern adepts and the most famous magicians, such as Zoroaster, Hermes, Apollonius, Simon of the Temple, Tothemius, Agrippa, Porta, the Neapolitan, Dr. D. And I'm not done sharing about Dr. D on this channel. 
certainly my experiences, I've, I plan to sh share them as they go on, but you know, I'm not done the Dr. D stuff. Paracelsus, Roger Bacon, and a great many others to which the author has subjoined notes endeavoring to point out the differences of the arts so as to free the name of magic from any scandalous imputation, seeing it is a word originally significative, not of any evil, but of every good and laudable science, such as a man might profit by and become both wise and happy, and the knowledge of occultism is so far from being offensive to God, our man, that the very root, our ground of all magic, takes its rise from the holy scriptures, viz. the fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom, and charity is the end. Which fear of God is the beginning of magic? For magic is the wisdom, and on this account wise men were called magi. Well, magi was a tribe name, but it became the term for, you know, um, that there was, you know, something to the side there. Um, you know, a skill. Because they're like, oh, these... Because it was weird. It was weird in the ancient world that uh, people, did, uh, you know, that everybody in the community could do all the basic rituals themselves and all, all that stuff. It's like, it's doable. Even greater things are doable. But, uh, you know, they... You know, it was just usually pushed off to some professionals that, oh, you can read the books on religious sayings and all that stuff. The magicians were the first Christians, for by their high and excellent knowledge, they knew that the Savior who was promised was now born man. Well, you can't really make that point, but that Christ was our Redeemer. Well, in, in the Zoroastrian sense, maybe, that here's somebody who's going to be the... Um, Example bearer, the safest through example, advocate and mediator. They were the first to acknowledge his glory and majesty. Therefore, let no one be offended at the venerable and sacred title of magician or adept, a title which every wise man merits while he uh, pursues that path which Christ himself trod, these humility, charity, mercy, Fasting, prayer, etc. And again, men should be wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. Well, as as doves. Um, such instruction as these are frequently named and given in many places of the Holy Scripture. Likewise, the apostles confess the power of working miracles. There's some fingerprints in here. Yeah, see, this dude should have checked. Um, or is it a woman's hand? That might be a woman's hand. Um, doesn't matter. Something through, something in Christ, something positive of Chris, that man who can, something of the personal uh, I, I don't know what all that says. Appetite, abstinence from drunkenness, gluttony, and other bestial passions, and who lives pure and temperate, free from actions which degenerate a man to a brute, may become a recipient of divine light and knowledge by which he may foresee things to come, whether to private families, or kingdoms, or states, empires, battles, victories, etc., and likewise the capability of doing much good to his fellow creatures, such as the healing of all disorders, mental, physical, and assisting with the comforts of life, the unfortunate and distressed. Further, the writer has spoken largely of prophetic dreams and visions through the different chapters, and has given valuable knowledge, fully set down for the information of the wise, some few most secret things being reserved by the author for his pupils only not to be taught by publication and perhaps one of those things is that you know to prove that a person's gone through that now the ethics and what's required actually required spiritually perhaps not but maybe the system to advance in certain ways uh, I, I, I don't know how to describe this without, you know, some of the mystery school stuff I don't justify, but, you know, um, if in these writings the author seems oracular and dogmatic, it's because he writes from the standpoint of the adept and seer rather than that of the scientist or materialistic philosopher, and depends for the recognition and acceptance of the absolute truth upon its clear and positive enunciation through the soul, then upon its exposition and defense by argument. Now, I'm going to finish giving you a, you know, don't, don't touch turtles like this when you see them, unless you're saving them from some domestic 
human situation. Machines and dogs and all that. And I'm 